Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. Today's pre-market post scan report is being recorded on this wonderful day of August the 8th, Tuesday, 2017. And it's just about to turn 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looking directly into the overnight markets, the Dow is off 23 points at 22,039. NASDAQ 100 is down six and a quarter at 59.27 and three quarters. E mini S&P 500 is down three and a quarter at 24.74 a half. Russell is at 14.11, down 2.9. Gold is at 12.69.60, up $4.90 after hitting $12.71. Oil is flat at $49.40. Soybeans is up $7.75 at dollars and a quarter. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. We got uh, the euro is up 11 pips at 118.31. The pound down 13 pips at 130.36. And the Aussie is up 22 pips at 79.31. The uh, U.S. dollar index slipped a little bit, 11 pips at 93.31. So basically, NVIDIA, you're looking at this, the chart you're looking at right now. And NVIDIA yesterday hit a new high of 172.37. And then the over and the extended or it moved up higher in the extended market. Now in the pre-market, here we are sitting uh, at a high of 174.18 almost a $2 move higher than where the market closed yesterday. So um, it's really moving along with the Bitcoin rather nicely. Um, only thing is, we've got a little little bit of rampage after this, this bowl here. So we could be topping out possibly here temporarily. Um, we'll see if there's another catalyst to really push prices beyond that point. The next thing to take a note of is that we're in that overbought area. And we're going to see if the market's going to lock in like it did back here when we hit that. So we'll see. Right now, though, everything is very bullish and looking good so far. Uh, as far as the Bitcoin space and on the cash side, looking at NVIDIA. All right, so let's take a look at how these futures are looking. All right, right now, you see the NASDAQ pulling back a little bit. The NASDAQ is really flat on this daily chart. All right, the momentum is flatlined. There's nothing there after we hit that, that high. All we're doing is trading within that range that was established. And that range that was established is 59.95 and three quarters and 58.44 and three quarters. Okay, so that's what you got right now. You got about a 150 point range in the NASDAQ that you're trading in, which is pretty amazing. And again, this is a daily chart. This is a daily chart. So you literally had from top to bottom 58.44 that rallied to 59.95 and three quarters in one day. Now the market is trying to, um, well, I shouldn't say rallied, but it, it, it crashed that amount. Um, but still, that's your range. So that means you were here. And then you went here, and then you finally finished here. And now we're just flatline trading virtually the same price that we were from July 27th. All right, so we're, we're pretty much right where we were, right in line with that. We really haven't moved since July the 27th, and today is August the 8th. All right, so the market is trying to set itself up momentum-wise to get a little pop. But really, you just on and off. Like here's you're off, you're on. You're off, you're on. You're, you're on slightly, then you're off. Then you're off again, now you're on. So it's just going back and forth, switching momentum size with no follow through in either direction, which is a pretty weird uh, place to be in a market like this. It's deciding what it wants to do, if anything. 
So usually when it's moving like this and you're bullish, you have to go with the trend and the trend is up. So I would suspect that it wants to make another run toward the old high and possibly make a play at that high to take it out. So I wouldn't be necessarily looking for the NASDAQ to come off here. I'd be looking for it to try to get some traction, gain some legs, and get to running. So to be honest with you, I like the NASDAQ here. Now, since we have this chart up, I'm going to flip over to the post wave price triggers and take a look at the what it says about the NASDAQ futures here. If you look at your sheet, you'll notice on the in play tab that not only is the NASDAQ 100 futures still in a uh, parabolic price pattern, but you're locked in. All right, your momentum is locked in. You have an 11 under that positive momentum reading. So it's locked in. All pullbacks are buying opportunities. So we're going to look to buy uh, the pullback here. All right. We're going to look to see if the intraday price inflection point will be triggered. All right. On the continuation pattern or not. So looking looking at that NASDAQ, I like the NASDAQ futures uh, for today in that regard. Now, as far as any warnings. All right. Let's take a look at warnings real quick. Uh, we'll look. We'll start off with the um, the overbought signals. Uh, I do see one in uh, Broad Ridge Financial Solutions ticker BR, and I have a overbought situation in the um, the Pro Short Russell's 2000 RWM. So that bodes well. For the bulls, meaning that we might, uh, the Russell may try to play catch up today and we might get a bounce in the Russell. So that's going to be interesting to see. All right, let's look at some of these crash alerts. All right, as far as crash alerts go, we do have some to talk about here. Let's start with the, with the first one. All right, I do have a crash alert in the, um, the euro. Okay. Now, it should be noted that I'm looking at the in play tab, but I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at a weekly version. I'm looking at a weekly version of the uh, in play tab. So for you, that would just cor correspond to your um, your weekly tab as well. Matter of fact, let me let me pull that up while I'm talking about it, and just to see how things are panning out so far. All right, let's see here. Okay, so uh, let's see. We start off the week with a uh, crash alert in the Hang Seng and the Shanghai Composite Index. We'll put that out there. Gold Futures has a uh, has one. The um, so does the um, the Euro. I, I pointed that out. Gold and Silver has it. Um, Apple has it, which is a component of the NASDAQ. So we have that there. We have quite a few. The financial sector, FAS, GX, GXJ. Uh, this is a, a plethora of pullback alerts. Just wanted to throw that out there at you. There's a lot of them um, as far as that's concerned. And let's see what else we got here. We got the energy sector as well as far as United States oil. All right, so let me get out of here and go back to my tab here. Go back to the in play. All right, so for today, the alerts that you want to, things you want to keep your eyes on would be Apple, Bank of America. Uh, let's see. So on Chipotle has a uh, crash alert on it. Uh, the euro yen, <clears throat> euro yen has one. Uh, let's see, GDX, GDXJ, GLD, uh, NAC. Um, now the Veritasium, I still have it on here, but I'm working out some things with this one because they're doing it in based on Ethereum, based on Ethos, and not you know dollars and cents. So there's going to be some maneuvering. I have it on the sheet just for data purposes so I can, you know, have enough data to crunch, you know, as I 
as it gains more traction and stuff like that. The reason I bring it up because today Veritasium um, was up like what, 75% or something crazy. Uh, like right now, it's up uh, zero. It's, it's, it's trading at 0. 0.6000, up 4.35%. But it did hit an hit an even uh, even one ether delta. So it was it was very interesting, <laughs> just the way that the thing is, is is being priced out and how they do it. So I'm still working on that. Still working on how to how to get that in here the right way. But needless to say, we'll keep plugging away. Uh, let's see. So USO, everything in the uh, energy space is looking weak. Uh, dry ships has a crash alert on it. Uh, the British pound has one. And like I said, crude oil futures. So I think that we've already begun to see the, the pullbacks being manifested here. The beginning of the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll just keep our eye on that. Uh, let's see, notables for rally alerts. Let's see, we'll start off with the oversold alerts. Uh, we do have one in Tekla Healthcare Investors, ticker symbol HQH. Uh, the Russell 2000 Index has a, ra uh, uh, a oversold alert. Uh, so I do like I do like the Russell here as well. If it's, we'll see if we can get some traction today. Uh, we have some, some solid looking um price triggers on that russell i do i must say i do like the way that's looking right now it did trigger uh in the overnight market on a uh on a possible short let's see here yep it sure did it sure did on a on the short side it did um it did show a uh, a trigger so we'll see if we can get some some muster on that and then see if it can uh, it can run. We'll see. All right, but if not, then the short trigger will probably play out just on an intraday basis. All right, we got. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, DBA has a uh, oversold alert, so it may get a little gain a little traction, and especially if the dollar continues to slide a little bit, we'll see some more of that. All right, as far as uh, strong rally alerts on here, uh, the most notable would be AMD Advanced Micro Devices has a rally alert on it. Amazon has a rally alert. And, oh, boy, what do we have here? U.S. Steel has a rally alert. Go U.S. Steel, huh? It's been beat down for so long. Uh, Steam has a rally alert on it. Uh, we'll see how that uh, plays out. System likes buying buying the the dip the pullback on the steam. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, the U.S. dollar index has a, a rally alert on it, but I will say that the market is nowhere near the price inflection point. So we're probably got to wait for it to pull back a little bit more before we get triggered. Uh, triggered long on that one. Uh, BTSC, remember I showed you in the video last night uh, that this one has been the weaker sister in the, the whole blockchain uh, equity side of things. It's not behaving, even though it's more widely held than BITCF. All right, UUP has a rally alert, uh, obviously, because the U.S. dollar does. All right, the uh, Dow Transport uh, has a, uh, that's IYT. It has a rally alert as well, but it should be noted that there has uh, been some negative uh, momentum building. All right. We got negative momentum building in the Dow transports. So we cannot ignore those negative momentum alerts and it's locked in. You have an 11. All right. Now we're in a, uh, a bull market in the Dow transports. But your downtrend and your negative momentum are giving you 11 readings. And you have a rally alert. So this one is a little twisted. We'll see what, what wins out, the, the longer-term trend or that momentum that's building. I think the momentum could make it topple over depending on how many people are building short positions. The system's picking up significant uh, building of short positions in the Dow transports. 
uh, take a look at uh, soybeans does have a rally alert uh, but again the um, the market is far removed um, from reality on this one uh, so I would anticipate probably a few more days of uh, letting the market do what it's going to do uh, also I don't like the trend here if you take a look at the um, weekly chart you'll see that you're it's been in a bear market but we're now in a full retracement within the bear market so the market has been rallying off of the bear market lows uh, we don't know how much further that may go but we we still can't ignore uh, the price triggers on that so we'll we'll keep watching that all right, let's see what else we got. Uh, let's see, rally alert in DGLD. So I guess the market is wanting to see if gold is going to overcome. Gold is in the same chart pattern position as the soybeans. Um, and that's because gold is also a commodity as well as a currency. Right now, the commodity forces are what has been in play in gold. So DGLD's um, technicals are identical to the soybeans technicals. You have a three in the uptrend, all right, which means that you have um, long positions being established <clears throat> and the market is locked in on as far as that retracement is concerned. But, you know, it's, it's like baby muscles, all right? You trade it but you don't know where it's going to stop. It could be pretty weak because the the more powerful signal is the negative momentum reading because an 11 is a locked in trend. It's a long term locked in trend. Remember, 11 is weekly momentum. Three is daily momentum. All right. The weekly momentum is stronger than your daily momentum. A three in the uptrend column is daily. 11 is weekly. So long term override short term. If short term builds enough, then it can change the longer term outlook, depending on how much power we get behind the move. But right now, that those 11s, man, I'm going to quote from, uh, what, what movie was it? Was that the Eddie Murphy? Um, was that, no, that Eddie Murphy, uh, Life Stinks, Life Stinks. When the guy was like, oh no, his 11s are up. And that always meant, that the person was about to die. So when you see these 11s are up, all right, that's what that means. So these 11s are locked in. So I think that the rally or the bounce could be short lived when you see those 11s and those momentum columns. And you have to take it for, for what it is. That's what, that's what you see. You got to trade what you see. All right. So let's see what else we got. Uh, natural gas. We ha haven't really talked a lot about natural gas um, and that's because its 11s are up look at the 11 in the negative momentum column and you'll see that the natty gas is looking quite weak and if you look over here at the chart you see it did get down to 280 all right um, the negative momentum is still locked in even though it has a rally alert it's still price trigger so far removed from the market, this thing would have to have, it's going to have to work off a lot. It's going to have to work this week is basically what you see. When you see the price trigger far removed from the market, you have no choice but to, uh, you, can just, you can place the order and let the market come to you. But that's basically what you're doing. You're waiting. You're, you're waiting for a snipe. You're not chasing price. You're letting price come to you. You always want to have price come to you, period. You don't chase anything, ever. All right. This is this is like sniping, like hunting. You got to be patient. You got to you got to position yourself, prop yourself up on that tree limb covered in your camouflage and your leaves. And you don't hardly make a sound. You don't even, you know, set your breathing right and everything. You don't make a sound and you prepare to sleep on that limb all night long if, if possible because you're waiting for your target to come to you. So you can snipe it. All right. That's what this is. 
So that's where we're at. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, UNG, the, the cash component of uh, the net gas futures, same thing, uh, same same setup. The only difference is the natty gas futures and the and the UNG counterpart, they're both in a parabolic bear market condition on the weekly chart. That has not changed. And you have locked in 11s. So things change. It's, it is, is what it is. There's not that we can do about it. Um, now, I heard on, uh, I think it was CNBC yesterday or somewhere else, you know, they're quick to say, oh, the U.S. dollar is now in a bear market. Well, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as the uh, algorithms are concerned, that is not true. The U.S. dollar index is showing on the weekly chart. Yeah, we have the, the 11 in the negative momentum column. So the negative momentum is definitely uh, long term momentum is still bearish. However, the downtrend is a baby downtrend. All right. It is not a full blown um, put together trend. On the uptrend column, uh, we show a correction uh, warning, meaning that the market should pull down more as well. But this is not a full-blown 70 reading or 78, which is parabolic. I know if you look at a chart, it says so. But remember, we don't we don't just use charts. We use charts for illustrative purposes for doing the videos. But we don't trade off of charts. We trade off of the uh, artificial intelligence and the genetic uh, software, which is counter uh, the what you see. What you see is not always reality and what you get. Look at this daily trade. Like, oh, look at that. Man, that, is, that is a huge downtrend, but not necessarily. You know, who are you going to believe? The algorithms are your lying eyes. Look at this weekly chart. All right. See, it's different. It's not the same. That's why you can't just look at just one time frame. And sometimes you can't even believe the price action on here because what you may not be able to see with your naked eyes, what's going on behind the scenes. And I've been doing this for almost 25 years. So I know to trust the system, no matter what you think, no matter what your counterintuitive feelings are, you go with what the price action is telling you. Yes, it's bearish, but you go with what the price action is telling you. So in this case, I'm not going to say, oh, the U.S. dollar is in a full-blown bear market. It's just in a bear market territory. If you look at here, yeah, you're below the Kumo cloud, which is bearish. That's a bear market. But that's what they're talking about. What I'm saying is I don't have a full-blown trend developed, and you don't. That's the thing about it. Who are you going to believe? The algorithms or your lying eyes? All right. You look at this and say, oh, yeah, this is definitely bearish. Yeah, yeah. Traditionally, yeah, it would be. It would be. But uh, what, are you going to sell this? You would sell it here at the bottom like that? OK. Well, you do what you do. And I'm going to thank you in advance for all of your money that you've been donating to me in these markets. As a matter of fact, I don't want to take time out right now to do that. I want to thank everyone for who doesn't all the people who don't follow the weekly post wave price triggers i just want to thank you for if it was not for you my lifestyle would not be possible so i just want to thank you for not using the post wave price triggers and thank you for all the profits that i've been able to obtain on a consistent basis over the years please by all means continue to use whatever method that you're using that is contrary to the post wave price triggers. I appreciate it. You have no idea. So, on behalf of myself and all the um, Black Ops trade premium trading room uh, subscribers, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we would love it if more people decided that they weren't going to use the price triggers and go it alone or subscribe to some ridiculously priced service, signal service. Please, by all means, do so. And we just thank you, because like I said, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to to enjoy life the way we do. So I just want to thank you. 
Uh, and with that being said, uh, remember, PulseWaveTrading.com, come learn how to trade these markets the right way. Learn how to profit in an up market. Learn how to profit in a down market. Learn how to profit in a sideways moving market. Just learn how to profit. PulseWaveTrading.com. Bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing, uh, nothing back. And also be on the lookout for an upcoming webinar that we will do. It's been a while since I did a live YouTube webinar. We'll be doing another one soon. Uh, I'm open to what topics you would like to discuss or what markets you would like to discuss. And uh, I'll take it under advisement. And with that being said, uh, I think it's time to say peace.